Hallelujah. The Lord is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. We are still on our series, Building Christian Character. We talked about a couple of weeks ago, able to hear God. Being able to hear God. And last week, anybody know what we talked about? Amen. 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 Does anybody remember? From a star to a superstar. Huh? From a star to a superstar. There you go. We talked about loving all mankind. Amen. These are some of the characteristics of a, of a true believer. We ought to love all mankind because God first loved us. Amen. Today we're going to be talking about something here that uh, as we continue looking at some of the list of categories of a believer, we need to interject something here because this is one of the number one enemies, I believe, one of the number one enemies of a believer uh, building Christian character and allowing God's spirit to flow through them and out through them to witness to the world. And that's fear. That's fear. I believe that is the, that's the enemy's number one weapon. We didn't really recognize that. Because when we're not walking by the Spirit of God and not allowing God to have free course in our life, the spirit of fear kind of comes in. Kind of comes in and without us even recognizing it. And it freezes us. Amen? Amen. So today's title is Fear, the believer's number one enemy. Amen? I want you to turn your Bibles to Joshua. Joshua chapter 1, uh, just 8 or 9 verses here. Here, if we, as we look at this chapter here, Moses had died. And Joshua was the successor of Moses, and the Lord had told them to lead them people into the promised land. Now think about this. Joshua had already, wit already witnessed Moses leading them out of Egypt and the things they had to go through, especially when they came across the Red Sea. Now, God didn't ask any questions. He just said to him, I need you to take over. Amen? But he encourages them so many times in this particular uh, message. And it's encouragement to us because fear is that thing that will hinder us from being who we are. Yeah. It, will, it will hinder us. Mm -hmm. Joshua 1 8 says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord came to pass, and uh, the Lord spake unto Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore rise. Go over to this Jordan, thou and all his, this people, unto the land which I do, Give to them, even the children of Israel. You notice he didn't say, well, I need to ask you a question. I need you to do this for me. Or you think, are you willing to do this? He, he just, he commanded him to actually do this. But watch here, he says, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, and have given them, that I have given to you, as I said unto Moses. You notice, every, wherever he puts his foot at, that God gave him. It will be his. Mm -hmm. So all the times, what he's saying there to us is that a lot of times we put our feet other places that God didn't make a path for. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Now watch this. He says, From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be you, your coast. There shall not be any be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Now he's giving him confidence because he immediately knew that fear set in. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, I can't duplicate what Moses did. But he's trying to, he's starting off trying to encourage him and let him know that I am with you. The same way I'm with Moses. I'm going to be with you. And he, he, didn't stop, he didn't stop there. Look at the next verse. He says, Be strong and good courage, you see. For unto this people shall thou divide for inheritance that the inheritance of the land which I swore unto thy fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous. See, he's saying it again. That thou mayest exert to do all, to do according to all the, to the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper 
will brother thy cough. So he's promising them, if you be courageous, all right, and not afraid, that's what he's really telling them, don't be afraid. I want you to be strong. Mm -hmm. Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, be strong in the Lord mm -hmm. and the power of his might. Mm -hmm. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate there that day and night, and thou mayest deserve to do the things that are written therein. For then thou shalt make thy wife prosperous, and then thou shall have good success. Now we'll go to the next verse. He says it again. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and be of good courage, and be not afraid. Mm -hmm. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whatsoever thy God. So he's promising them in there. Because, you, you know, but the, it's actually listed in the Bible, the term fear not. Mm -hmm. 365 times. According to our count, that's one for every day. Amen. Amen. And we live in a very challenging world where fear is, to, to, to get, to be in fear and stay in fear, it's all around us. Yes. Yeah. It is all around us. Mm -hmm. You hear about the fear of war and the fear of diseases and viruses. Jesus. And now people just don't, don't even want to come out the house. It's just like, you know, you, you're locking your doors and you're putting all the canned goods in the basement. And it's like, you know, what is going on? Mm -hmm. But as a believer, he's telling us to fear not. The Bible tells us in 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, I believe, chapter 1, verse 7. The Lord did not give us a spirit of fear, yes. but a power and love and a sound mind. Yes. See, that word there, fear, that means, you know, he didn't give us a spirit of being a coward. God has equipped us with his spirit. We are partakers of his divine nature. We have the very ability, overcoming ability, dunamis ability of the Holy Spirit in us to do whatever God has called us to do. But if we don't watch it, here comes fear. Here comes fear. And it comes, it doesn't tell you when it's coming, but it, it's, it comes, amen? And we need to pay attention. There's some common fears we have to talk about, first of all, right? Mm -hmm. One of the first common fears is social phobias. Some people are just afraid of being around people. Okay. Come on now. No. They don't like to uh, be in front of crowds. Amen? Fear of open spaces. People have witnessed that. Mm -hmm. Fear of heights. Fear of heights. Fear of Enclosed places. Enclosed places. I always, I always had a problem with that when I uh, uh, had to get like a test with an MRI. It always seemed like they would put me in a drawer and, just, and push in the drawer, and you know. But now, praise God, they have these open MRIs, which to me still seems closed. <laughs> then you have fear of insects. Arachnophobia, you know, spiders. And, all types of bugs, amen? Mm -hmm. And there's fear of snakes. There's fear of dogs. People are afraid of dogs. People are afraid of a storm. I remember we was coming up, you know, we, when a storm came and it was thunder light, and you had to turn all the lights off and had to yeah. go in the basement, you know, because of the storm, you know? <laughs> there's a lot of people who are afraid of needles. Yeah. They're afraid of the sight of a needle. We all have some types of fears in our lives right now that, you know, we, we're still dealing with. But we need to look at it from the perspective of God. Yeah. Because these things can hinder us, man, and they, and they, 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 they uh, uh, paralyze us. Mm -hmm. See, when it says the word phobia, that comes from the word, it's like it's, it's uh, being paralyzed. Mm -hmm. Fear paralyzes you. Mm -hmm. You can't move. I mean, you can't, you can't do anything. I mean, some fears are healthy now. We have some healthy fears that, you know, electricity is a very healthy fear to be afraid of. You know, you don't go lick your finger and stick it in the faucet, in the, in the socket. You don't do that. But some fears are just here, and, and, and it's, they're important. But we need to understand this, this spirit of fear that comes on a believer when we want to live for God. Yeah. Do I have a witness in the house? Amen. 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 We need to really realize that. Um, now, Joshua was equipped for taking the people into the promised land. Even after Moses had died, he was equipped for it. But God was just encouraging him, he said, you be strong, be good. 
you know, be courageous. Don't, don't be afraid. I want you to be strong. And he was telling them to be strong in him. Mm -hmm. You know, we take the focus off ourselves and put it in God. This is when everything begins to dissipate around us. Yeah, All those fears and worries yeah, and yeah, yeah, second yeah. guessing. When we keep looking at God and depending on God's voice. And I heard a sister say in her testimony, which is very important, that, you know, uh, that she hears that inner voice. And it's so sad that, you know, some people don't even really know what that means. Yeah. Really, they don't really have that inner witness to let them know when, when fear comes in that we have a way out. Amen. We have an understanding about fear, you know. And, and uh, uh, I don't know how people make it. I really don't. Without having an assurance of God's presence in, with, within you Amen. to let us know that, you know, all this out here don't mean nothing because the greater one lives on the inside. Amen. Amen? So fear is something that we have to look at and deal with because it's important that we see it from God's perspective. Here you notice that God had promised uh, uh, Joshua and promising us in that verse 8. He said, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou shalt make observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, then, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Mm. Amen. Amen. You, know, you, you notice here, people may think that success means to be highly intelligent. Or, uh, you know, being around some elite people or some nice friends or having this and having that. Mm -hmm. But according to this scripture, it doesn't mean that. He's saying here to ask thee to have success is don't depart from this word. Always have an ongoing relationship with the word of God. Mm -hmm. Because we know that there's life in the word of God. We know that man don't live by bread alone. So when we can continually allow God's word to flow through us, mm -hmm. You know, we don't have time to fear. Because yeah. we're concentrating on hearing the voice of God, loving all mankind, and shunning fear. Because we know, according to that scripture, that 2 Timothy 1, 7, God didn't give us that spirit. So when we listen, so when we are not following to the spirit of God, who do you think is going to slip in there? The spirit of fear. <laughs> the spirit of fear. Now, we had to, we had to define... The word fear means an unpleasant emotion. It's an uh, unpleasant Now we, we already realized, and we came to the conclusion that the emotion falls under the realm of the mind. The will, intellect, personality. So the enemy attacks our mind. That's why it's vitally important that we understand who we are in Christ and uh, separating our mind from our spirit. You know? Really realizing and knowing that for a fact for yourself, because if we don't know that, we 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 will excuse our mind as being the spirit of God. Yeah. And the only difference you're gonna the only only way you see a difference in that is that the spirit, the spirit is agrees with the word of God. Right. So when the word of God comes in, it gives us understanding in our mind that what we was thinking about and leaning on is not God at all. We got to go by thus saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. If he says I'm more than a conqueror, well, you and I are more than a conqueror. Yes. Mm -hmm. Regardless, whatever the ch task or the challenge that awaits us, yeah. we got to really focus on what did God say? Amen. Not, not what I said, or not what you said, but what did God say? Mm -hmm. And this is where you could really tell where you are in your life as you go through these challenges. Because there's going to be challenges every day we walk outside the door. There's a challenge. Because we're living in a world that is dark. Jesus. That they, don't, they don't know God. The people we encounter, they don't know God. So we have to be, we have to be aware. We've got to be alert. We've got to be ready. Because like I said, fear, fear is not something that's going to come up and tell you that it's there. It's just going to pop up and it's going to suddenly be there. Mm -hmm. And we've got to be able to recognize it. Amen. Amen. We gotta be able to recognize it when it comes. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that what he was telling me, he says, be strong and very courageous. You notice here, he said the first time, he says, six, be strong and be of good courage. 
7, he says, Only be thou strong and very courageous. So in other words, he's emphasizing here, look, this is the thing that's going to get you through and help you understand. Amen. Because even though I'm calling you to do this test, Moses is dead. Now I need you. How many of you have been in situations where you was kind of not like in this kind of situation, but a situation similar where, you know, something had to be done, you had to step up immediately. Mm -hmm. I mean, all types of things went through your mind. Amen? Yeah. And you just said to yourself, well, can I, can I do this? Can I do this? Mm -hmm. For a person who's, let's say you had the, the person uh, had, was a public speaker and they had to get it in front of people. But all of a sudden they couldn't do it and they, they called on you. You had to really focus. You was probably sweating bullets. <laughs> kind of realize what you're going to say. But most people succeed in situations like that when they just be themselves. Yeah. And they take themselves, that, what I mean be themselves, is they take themselves out of the big picture and realize that, okay, I don't have anything written. I don't have no speech prepared. I'm just going to come from the heart. Amen. And usually you think about that. I mean, you get through. And see, but God wants us, he wants us to rest in him. Because there's some things that we're going to face in our life that's going to be full of fear. But we can do all things through Christ who strengthen us. But it's our responsibility to allow Christ to strengthen us. That's why I said, don't let this word depart out of thy mouth. I want you to meditate day and night and observe to do the things that are written in it. He says, when he says to observe to do the things, in other words, when you read it, observe it. Understand it. God, what do you mean by this? That's why I have so many stories. I'm, I'm reminded by one particular verse mm -hmm. in Romans chapter, I have to read it to you. It's Romans chapter 15, verse 1, and it says, uh, 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 verse 4, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Now, we got to learn some stuff. These things that's going on right now is for our learning right now. Amen. That we, through patience and comfort of what? The scriptures might have hope. So these fears, remember, it's a fear, it's a fear, every, fear not, fear comes us every day, but he's telling us fear not. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be one for every day. Yeah. So we have to allow the, the, the comfort of the scriptures and the hope of the scriptures to, to, to get us through. Because in the scriptures is where life lies. Mm -hmm. All life. Praise God. Amen. Because yes. God is the word. <laughs> and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't, you know, this, this word to me is like, you know, we've never seen God in no time. We've seen his creation. We've seen what he has accomplished. Mm -hmm. Even in our own lives, we've we never really seen him. Can't really see him. We can't, I mean, he's so powerful. But it's like, mm -hmm. it, 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 our, you know, it, we go blind immediately. It's how powerful God is. But what God did, what did he do? He, he, he knew that we had to have some type of attachment. So what did he do? He sent his son. He sent his only begotten Amen. son. Amen. The form of a man. Amen. Amen. So we can relate. Because Jesus went through the same things that, we, that we're going through. Amen. 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 But he didn't succumb to him. What did he do? He obeyed his father. And even though, listen, he came to die. Even though he has great, he had great success and he prospered. Because what did he do? He rose. Death did not Amen. destroy him. Amen. 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 And he, he, he died on that cross for your sins and my sins. Yeah. But he remained faithful. And this is all God was telling us. I want you to remain faithful. Faithful. Because when you remain faithful, what happens is fear don't have no place. Fear doesn't have a place to come in our lives. And there's going to be situations, all of us, to, or time for us to fear. Something's coming down the road. God allows it to happen because he wants to see what's in us and see what we are made of, according to Deuteronomy chapter 3. I mean chapter 8. He wants to see what's in us. Amen? Is it God in us? Or is it us in us? Amen? So we gotta under, we got to really understand that and see that. Praise God. You know, when it says, when he, said, when he says here, but thou shalt meditate there day and night and observe to do the things that are written therein. And that we said that. Observe to do the things that are written therein. Now watch this. It reminds me of Mark chapter 4. 
when we did our study on Mark 4 where it says, uh, um, pray God, listen, be careful for what you are hearing. Remember that? The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear, watch, will be measured of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you and more besides will be given to you who hear. So what that tells us, we gotta, we really got to concentrate. This is, this is war. This is the spiritual war that we are in. Amen? Yeah, we don't see the enemy, but he is present. Because he comes to the realm of our faults. That's why Jesus says, take no thought. That's why 2 Corinthians 10 tells us 5, which it says, it says, cast down the imaginations and every high thing that adults and stuff against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So we've got to be able to recognize thoughts so we can bring them to the obedience of Christ. Because, I mean, you can turn the TV on, what's, going to, what's the first thing you're going to hear? Fear! Turn the news on, fear! Everywhere you go, it's fear! You know? But God didn't give us that spirit. See? He didn't give us that spirit. He gave us the spirit of what? Love. Peace. Listen, power, power. peace. Watch this. And a sound, self-controlled, well-balanced mind. People who are, 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 you know, you've seen people who are come down with so much phobia that they got to put them away. They got to put a, a, a straitjacket on them. They lock them up in a room. Because whatever it is, 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 is destroying them. Yeah, people got it so bad they can't come out of their own houses yeah. and face people, face anything. Because what it what it does to them. And it's sad to say there's a lot of believers. There's a lot of believers like that because a lot of things they fail to do. They don't meditate day and night. They only pray when disaster comes or you know something really bad comes along. But we ought to pray ahead of time. We we'll prepare ourselves ahead of time. And when that thing comes down the road, we'll be confident and we'll be, we'll be fixed and focused and established in the heart that whatever it is, God's got it. Amen. He's constantly uh, um, warning, not warning, but encouraging Joshua. I got it, man. Look at verse 5. He says, There shall not be any be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. In other words, whoever comes against you, they ain't going to be able to make it. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be able to get through. He says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Now the thing about it, do I believe that? And do you believe that? I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Forsake is another word for abandon. Abandon is a, that's a tough word, man. Mm -hmm. To be abandoned. But God said, I will never abandon you. So a lot of times when we don't feel as though that God is there and he's not hearing us, I think that's the time when we have abandoned him. And that, that, that tells me, that's the time we got to go start seeking him. Yes. And seeking what he has. To. You ever notice when you're really going through something in your life and the answer's not coming from nowhere? You ever notice how you get focused? <laughs> we get so focused because we want to really start hearing something that makes some sense. Because see, once, once, when we became born again, we're new. We can't really resort to those things no more. We're looking for that inner voice. We're trying to hear God's direction. We're, you know, forget all the rhetoric. Forget all the nonsense. God, what you got to say? Amen. And see, that's the thing that brings us comfort, man. That's the thing that brings us, that brings that strength. Yeah. That brings that strength on. And that's the kind of voice that I want to hear constantly. Amen. But sorry to say, a lot of times, we, be able, we have to be able to recognize because Satan like Satan throws his fiery darts, man, and he's trying to knock us down. And, you know, we, we get to the point where we, we analyze ourselves, which is not bad because the Bible tells us to examine ourselves. But, you know, some things we see ourselves now where we might over-examine or over-analyze ourselves. And that's still a good thing because we're really seeing from God's perspective, you, you kind of worry too much, man. Yeah. Girl, you 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 gotta just let it, just settle down a little bit. You know what I mean? Don't it'll take care of itself. Come on now, and that's a blessing yeah. that we're able to see that. That's what you call growth. Mm -hmm. That's what you call growth, mm -hmm. and we can't really see growth, but we can experience growth. Amen. Mm -hmm. We don't know when it's coming, but we can experience it because when we we're going through these trials, what happens? When we trust them, what happens? And we really obey and we focus on God. God brings us through. He brings us through. Amen. God is good, isn't he? He is good. Praise God. I'm going to look at something here. Praise God. Um, 
When the Bible tells us, it was a situation in 1 Samuel 14, you have to turn it and put it in your notes, 1 Samuel 14, uh, 6, where Jonathan and his armor bearer uh, uh, was up against, they couldn't take on the attack from the, those, the, 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 the huge uh, Philistine army. But because everybody else was afraid, they trusted God. They trusted God. They knew that the size of the enemy army did not restrict God's ability to help. In other words, say unto the mountain, be thou removed, and don't doubt in your heart. And you should have those things to say. So in other words, what he's saying there is, I don't care how big the problem may be in your life, God is able. To do above and beyond all that we ask or think, he's able to do it. But we got to give him an opportunity to do it. You know, this is always a time when a person is really sick. And you're really, really sick and you're, and this, this fear really comes in. And you don't know what's going on. Your focus, your focus becomes so clear. Mm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you begin to say, you know what, i got to get to a, a place. And see, what you're actually doing is you go into your secret closet. And you shut the door and you're saying, okay, we got to get through this thing. That's a person who's mature and understands. But a person who tries to run away from these things is going to be a person who's never going to have victory. They're not going to have success and they're not going to prosper in life. Because, you know, they fail at the little things. The Bible tells us, uh, a song, the songs of Solomon, it says, it's the little foxes that sport a vine. In other words, it's those little things that we in our own personal life don't take care of. Like, like uh, uh, you know... Daily reading. Mm -hmm. yeah. Something as simple as that. I mean, I know I eat every day. I don't have a problem not even, not eating. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that, but that thought always comes to my mind. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When, what happened was 11 to 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, it's lunchtime. Got to get something to eat. Our body will even tell us that it's time to eat. Mm -hmm. We got to get to a point where our spirit tells us it's time to eat. Amen. And you know what? That's all the time because all you got to do is we're in this world. Yeah. We're in part of it. Well, while we're in it, that tells us it's time to eat. That tells us we got to continue to keep looking up because ain't nothing going to change down here. It's always going to be disastrous. It's always going to be wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes, famines, pestilence. That's pestilence. Is this, is this um, virus that's coming out of China? That's a pestilence. Amen. Sure. It's always going to happen. But we got to stay focused because... Fear because it's sad that that's the enemy, that's the believers, I believe, number one enemy. Yeah. That gets us off, you know, clinging to God. Mm. And puts us on the, the problem. Amen? Mm -hmm. yeah. In Genesis chapter 15, 1, God promises Abram that he was going to have a child. He was past the age, you know what I mean? Sarah couldn't have no kids. Mm. You know, she couldn't have no kids. She had past the age of bearing a child. But he had promised them in that verse. He says, uh, he promised to defend them. He said, I'm going to be your shield, and I'm going to be a great reward. So in other words, when we fear what lies ahead, remember that God will stay with you through difficult times, and he promised you great blessings. See, when fear comes, that should give us an opportunity to really, you know, see what God can do. You know, in other words, that thing that... that uh, uh, that thing that's in our life that's causing us fear, we got to give God the opportunity to say, okay, God, you can do this. Yeah. Take, for instance, mm -hmm. evidently you guys can realize now that I don't have any problem with public speaking. <laughs> but some people have a serious problem with it. Amen. That's okay. That's okay. You know, if they, they dread, I mean, I remember, you know, most people, I remember being in school when you had to, early come up and, and, and explain your, your work in front of the class, mm -hmm. it'd be so many people calling out. <laughs> you know what I mean? They just get these sicknesses that, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> an imaginary sickness. Uh -huh. Any kind of way to get around it. Amen? So, you ever heard the term face your fear? When you, you know, you, you, you face your fear when I was looking at, think about a situation where, you know, you work 16, 17 hours straight. You're tired. You just really, you just want to bed. You just want to lay down. You don't want to hear no noise. I don't care. You, if you heard a noise, you want to hear it because you're so tired. You just want to lay down. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, you lay down, you get into this deep sleep. 
and all of a sudden you hear the word, somebody shouting, fire, get out. And it's a fire. Now, you don't rationalize and you don't say, well, you know, I'm really tired. It's fire going to have to wait. Something on the inside of you motivates you, regardless of how tired you are, to get up and get out of there. Amen. Yeah. You see? Yeah. So we can do what we want, when we want. See, it's, our, our wills are very powerful. We have a very powerful will, but it has to be locked into the will of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Because to, to live this Christian life and to develop Christian character, fear is going to be one of those things that's going to be always saying, you, you know, you really can't. You might as well get this up. You know, you've been, you've been in church for a couple months now, a couple years. You know, it's just, what, what's, what's really changed? What's really going on? In your, what's really happening? Well, a whole lot of stuff is happening. We have come to a conclusion that Satan, you a lie and no truth in you. We have come to a conclusion that the word of God is true, man. And we can depend on God's word because God, every man's a liar, but God does not lie. This word, would tell, this word tells the truth. And we can depend on the word of God. But fear always puts us in that situation where, you know, the doubt comes and the fear comes. You know, the disbelief comes. Amen. When the Bible tells us that in Hebrews 11, I believe, verse 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Watch this. First, you must believe that he is. There's a lot of believers don't really know this God yet. They really don't know this God. They don't get, you know, they haven't really, really sought them. Or, you know, they're saved. But they haven't really, you know, you know, uh, uh, taught to teach, um, to seek him. To reach out to him. To fellowship with him. It's an amazing, to me, a miracle when you are seeking God and you're going through some things in your life. And then when fear comes, you're not even really thinking about what God said. But automatically on the inside, here come all this, you know... Uh, uh, escape out of that situation, out of that 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 that, uh, that fear that's trying to destroy you. Here's a, here's a situation. Go to First Corinthians chapter ten. First Corinthians chapter ten. We here? Amen. Hey Amen. Watch this. Look at ten. Look at twelve and thirteen. I believe. I believe it is. Yeah. Oh, I think. It's, it is, look at 12, 1 Corinthians 10, 12. It says, Wherefore, let him think if he stand, take heed, lest he fall. In other words, don't get caught up in yourself. Always have that humble spirit and a humble mind. Amen. Amen. Don't get caught up, ain't nothing going to happen to you. Yeah. Regardless of how much scripture you may know and how much time you spent in the word of God. Amen. Don't think that you know you, that's what he's saying there. He's saying, look, yeah. wherefore, let him think if, he stand, take heed lest he fall. Satan's always on a warpath, man, to, to throw some stuff at us. Mm -hmm. But watch the next verse. Watch the, he says, Therefore have no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above all that ye are able, but will, with the temptation, make a way up to escape, mm -hmm. that ye may be able to bear it. In other words, God has always given us a way out. It ain't nothing that the devil has pulled over our eyes to try to trick us that God don't know about. Because remember, God works from the inside out. When that fear comes, God got an answer on the inside to let you know, I got this too, don't worry about it. I was thinking the other day in my neighborhood, and some, maybe some of your neighborhoods too, and I was thinking like this from a spiritual perspective. Our neighborhood... Uh, has a fluctuation of raccoons. <laughs> and they only seem to come out in the morning. Amen? And, and the other day, you know, I always tease my wife when I walk out to the car or sometimes I stand at the door. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I always try to, you know, tease her. Coon! You know. <laughs> and she says, oh, oh, you know, just messing with her. <laughs> and this morning it was one. It was one. And I know it was a normal raccoon because he kind of like, and he took off. But they don't take off and they come to you. Something's wrong with that raccoon. And I started thinking, I said, uh, you know, 
the fear of that. Every morning now, you know they out there. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you ever notice, now a raccoon has a soul. Now watch this. This is what I'm getting the point. I'm getting to a place here. They have a soul because they're an animal. They don't have a spirit. They have a soul. You ever notice when you've been around, you're around an animal and you might not see him or you're around another person and you might not see him, but you feel somebody there? Am I, am I in the right place with y'all? You, you, you know somebody's around. Or women, you know when somebody's staring at you. Yeah. And then you locate the predator staring at you. But you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't see him. But you know that they were, something was there. Can I get amen? Amen. <clears throat> so you kind of witnessed that. And I started thinking about the fear of a raccoon. And I started thinking to myself, okay, God will let me know and let my wife know that if there's one out there, Watch this. All right, is this one out there that you feel it? Yeah. You ever have a situation where you turn around and there's a, a vicious dog right there? You know what I mean? And you, you know, I, I, I learned that you don't look him in the eye, you don't don't even look at him. You know, you don't pay him any mind. And usually he just come up and smell you and go on about his business. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's the whole fear of fear of a dog. You know. Uh, a kid see a dog, what do they do? The first thing they do, they take off. And that gives the dog stone, dog. And he's, you know, he's biting you, but he's probably just playing with you. But to you, it's a bite. You see? So we can overcome these fears. Some feel like I said, some fears are healthy. But we can overcome these fears by I always looking at it from God's perspective. Because there's going to be some things that's going to face us down the road as, we, as believers. And in order for us to go that next step, we got to really focus on God because that's the pathway. We read there, we read there in that Joshua, remember? He says, let's look at it again. Let's go there again, y'all. Praise God. Go to Joshua. Look what he said here. He said here in this verse, uh, chapter 1, Joshua, he says here, he says, now this is powerful. He says, uh, um, where is that verse? Praise God. Um, no, 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 three. Every place that thy soul of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you. The steps of a righteous man is ordered by the Lord. When we ain't righteous and doing what we're supposed to do, now we ain't on that path that God has prepared for us. We get off that path. So what happens is, that's when all this trouble starts. That's when all kind of things break out. And throw us off. Oh, God, I just looked at another scripture. Verses he gave me. But I want to I want us to look at a couple of verses here. A couple of scriptures here. Amen? Amen. To help us really look at this and see it from God's perspective. Look at uh, um, 1 John 4. 1 John 4. 1 John 4. We're receiving this? Amen. Amen. First John 4. Let's look at uh, verse 13. He says here, in 13, he says, well, watch this powerful verse. He says, Hallelujah. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us. That's the most important thing we got to understand right now. We in him and he in us. He said, if I abide in you, he's going to abide in us. And you should ask what you will, and it's the beginning of you. So this is what we, we're never alone. We need to realize that we're not alone. Even when fear comes, we're not alone. God knows about it. But he's saying, I did not give you that spirit. Now this is going to take some courage. This is going to take some focus. Because, you know, there's fears all around us. I don't know what fears you, I know some things that bother me, but there's some things that bother you. And they've been bothering you for a long time, and you're kind of like, I'm tired of it. Well, that's a good start. Get tired of it. Because this is going to hinder you from doing what you're supposed to be doing and being a person God wants you to be. Get tired of it. Some people's dreams never come to fruition because they are because of fear. Yeah. Afraid what somebody might say or what somebody might do or it might not happen. Well, you're never going to accomplish anything then. Amen. You know what I mean? We're not going to accomplish anything. Watch this. Let me finish reading here. Amen. He says here in 13, be, uh, because he hath given us his spirit, 14, 
And we have seen and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Watch this. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the Son that God hath God have to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Wherein is all love made man perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. You see that? There's no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. What does that mean? That means that when he says perfect love casts out fear, he, he read there, we, he said there in verse 13, remember, hereby know we that we are dwelling him and he in us. So we got to have that established first. No weapon formed against me because he's in me and he's in you. So he's saying perfect love casts out fear. So if I'm perfect in Christ and you're perfect in Christ and we're complete in Christ and we know we trust in him that no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. Amen. Amen. What's going to happen? It's going to cast out that fear. See, right there, you really find out where you are and how much we really got to build up that inner man. See, that's one of the biggest problems that a believer has. They don't really understand about the inner man, the outer man, the outermost man. They don't understand things like that. But that's what he means when he says, I die to self. No longer I who live. He didn't say that he was dying. He's saying, I don't lean on what I want to do anymore. I don't lean on my own understanding of what I think things ought to be. I don't lean on what the Word of God is saying. There's no longer I who live, but Christ live in me. See, that's that perfect love. Christ in me and you. So once we establish that, knowing that God is in us, watch what happens. He says here, perfect love cast out fear, because what? Fear has torment, and yes, it does. When a person is torment, what are they doing? They, they frozen. They can't move. You ever been so afraid when you were little? Even in a dream. You're running from the monster, but you ain't running fast enough, you think. You always feel as though you ain't running fast enough, but you are flying. <laughs> But it ain't fast enough. Amen. What is that? That's real. And if you never notice, even when we dream, have fear, if it's a nightmare, whatever it may be, it's it's you you experience that. That's how real it is. That's in the realm of the soul, in the realm of the mind. You've been in situations, we talked about this before, about a person who calls on the name of Jesus because they can't speak and they can't, well, they holler at anybody, they call Jesus, and all of a sudden that fear just dissipates, and you can get up and you can holler now, and you can say hallelujah now, but a couple of minutes ago you couldn't say anything because something was going on in your mind. You couldn't sleep. And it's funny how the enemy waits until you go to, go to sleep. But that's why it's important that when we go to sleep, our, our, our mind is staying on thee. Amen. Amen. Even, even during sleep, even when we wake up. And that's why we have a constant flow of thinking about and keeping our minds, our, our minds sound because God has given us a spirit, not a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind and love and power. Yeah. Once we recognize that, nothing can really penetrate us yeah. that we don't know about because the Spirit's going to let us know. Hey, where would that thought come from? Take no thought. What are you talking about? Well, we don't, I don't need that because I'm focused on the Lord. We hear this. Hallelujah. I'm focusing on what Christ is telling me. I'm telling you, fear is that thing. It's, um, it's, it's destroying a lot of people. And fear is one of, going to be one of the main things that's going to cause a lot of people to take the mark of the beast. Because yep. they're going to be thinking, well, I can't eat, I can't drink, I can't do nothing. i got to take this mark. But the Bible tells us. Amen. We gotta be aware. We gotta be aware of these things. So that's, that's what that's what the knowledge comes in at. You know, knowledge is power. Knowledge is actually power, but we have to really recognize what God has given us. Not along with that power, He gave us the wisdom, and He's the wisdom. He gave us the wisdom to understand some things, and all that getting to get understanding of what's going on in our lives because. In, in a strategic battle that we're in, a spiritual battle, things is happening in our lives. Look at yourself right now, and you know right now, a lot of us have been dealing with and hanging out with the spirit of procrastination. Jeez. We never really named it, but it's been really, every time we want to get up and move, uh, just sit back, it's, it's procrastination and the spirit of fear, they kind of hang out together. They do, they hang out together. You want to go ahead and do something? 
Well, you know, not right now. You know, you probably got that. something else better to do. You're getting all these wonderful thoughts from the Spirit of God. But then look at look at where you are. What have what what's really been accomplished? See, those personal accomplishments that we need to really track down and list in our own lives. Am I growing? Am I moving forward? Where should I be? Don't put so much personal stuff where you, in terms of the legalism, but look at it from the sense of God because God has a timetable. So a lot of us, you know, most of us don't really accomplish those things that God wants us to accomplish. Why? Because that Mark 4 we talked about earlier. Be careful what you're hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear. So we got to hear truth, not a fear from the enemy, but the truth. Because this is how we live, through the truth. Remember, it says in that 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, I'm a new creature of Christ. Listen, old things pass away, behold, new things come. And verse 18 said, and the new things are of God. So these are the new things. So i got to get into what the new things are. My whole line of thinking has to be transformed to know what these new things are. So when it comes time, when any comes and try to throw a dart and try to put fear on me, what you talking about, Wolves? <laughs> God's going to give, give you or me something from the inside. And this is, this is walking a, 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 a walk that, you know, you, you, you're strong. And you're, and you're fixed and you're focused. Amen? Amen? This is what it's all about. I want to read another verse for you. Did we get that? Romans 8. Oh, we still here. Yes. Amen. Romans 8. Amen. 15. Look at, no, I'm going to start from verse 9. He says, uh, watch this, verse 9. He says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you now. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You know, but you notice that we even looked at 1 John chapter uh, 4, remember 13, talked about the same thing, about the Spirit of God. we got to know that he's in us. Because we're not doing this by memory. This is by faith. This is a faith walk, and we do it by, by the power of God. Amen? Watch this. He says, we here? Amen. He said, look at the 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is, is life because of righteousness. But, the spirit of, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead so also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Then again, emphasizing that the spirit is the one that, when Jesus, when it says in uh, Hebrews chapter 12, I believe verse 2 or 1, it says, I think it's 2, he says, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Yeah. Philippians 2.13 says, for it is God who works in you to do of his good pleasure. Once we recognize that we can accomplish some things that we that God has placed in us to accomplish through Him. We put so much pressure on ourselves, and that's when we ourselves are let we allow the spirit of fear to come in. Yeah. We allow the spirit of fear to come in. How am I going to do this? Yeah. Well, if God has placed that path in front of us to walk, He has equipped us to make it. Amen. He has actually equipped us to make it. Look at verse 15 <clears throat> in Romans 8. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage. Listen, again the fear. Because fear is torment. You know, it, it's bondage. Yeah. You ever, it's like being tied up. Try running, try talking with tape all on your mouth and your hands tied behind your back. You can't do it. You can't do it. It's bondage. He says, for, for, for we have not received the spirit of bondage again the fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. By being born again, we have, a, we have something, we have overcoming power. Amen. Yeah. To overcome fear. Look at Ephesians 1, 10. We're here. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Ephesians 1, 10. I know it's a lot, y'all. I'm sorry, but I, then I'm not sorry, you know. Look at Ephesians. Ephesians 1. There's no 10, but it's, it's the first 10. Look at it says here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. 
So, it's actually Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Watch this. Actually, I can start from verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. See, this is still faith walk, right? And that not of yourselves is the gift of God. Not of works leads any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created, well, here it is. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God, listen, have before ordained that we walk, should walk in them. Other words, the men you 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 got saved. It was already a path we were supposed to walk. That's what he told Joshua. Anywhere your souls, remember, you know, when your souls touch the ground that I have prepared for you, you okay. And I think, I, it just, I just saw it in my spirit that anytime we step outside that path, that means we're, we stepped into disbelief. Mm -hmm. We stepped into the, the, the path of fear. Yeah. Because I didn't give, I didn't, you and I didn't take the thought and study the truth that we hear and start to say, wait a minute, is this God? The only way we're going to know is God and it's the path that we're supposed to walk is, what did he say? And that's where, that's why we emphasize it on the inside. He's talking to us. He's telling us, look, I got you. Like with Moses, like I was with him, I ain't going to leave you. And every time a, a, a prophet in this Bible was up against a task, he never said, you're on your own. He told them all, I want you to worry about it. He says this in Hebrews chapter 5, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I will not, emphasize it, I will not ever, ever leave you. It's us that leave him by our disobedience and, and caught up in the world. And the world ain't going nowhere. It ain't going nowhere. It's doomed. It's going to be a whole new world. Amen? Let me, let me look at this, y'all. Are we here? Yes. We are here. Okay, I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We've been reading this the last couple of weeks here. Look at verse um, uh, 10. You there say amen. amen. It says, But God hath revealed them unto us by Spirit. For the for the Spirit such as ye all things, ye the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. So that's why I can't believe, you know, when we go through things in our life, you know, I can't under, try to think why this is happening. But I'm not going to really understand why, what's going on is when I start looking towards him and trusting in his Spirit. No. Then his Spirit tells me, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you facts. This is facts. Recently here, I was going through some things in my own personal life, and it's amazing how God just, like, was giving me the answers, why this is that and why this is that. And I was like, I was like, I, I wasn't like, you know, because he'd done it before. But it, it was showing me how I, I uh, um, in my spirit, what was actually going on in my life before anybody on the outside could tell me? Seriously, what actually was going on? And it, it amazed me. I mean, it just it energized me. It gave me, uh, it increased my faith because, oh, here's the verse why I said that. Look at the verse. We're still reading down here, right? Mm -hmm. It's the very next verse. Oh, watch. Now ye have received not the spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things, listen, that are freely given to us of God. So, God has given us so much information yeah. about things in our lives. If we just tap into and really love Him, remember we talked about, we're talking about listening to God, and we're talking about loving all mankind. And in order for us to really, really see that and understand that, God, it's that inner conversation and that communication, that communion with his spirit that lets us know, regardless, you know, he, he's, he's the why behind the what. You know how many people don't know that? Look at other people going through some things in their life right now, and maybe you'd be like, mm, mm, mm. Even if you told them, they wouldn't understand. Yeah. Because, because it's the very next verse. Look, 
Which things also we speak not in the words of man's wisdom teaches, but with the Holy Ghost teaches, compare spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receives not the things of God. For they are foolish unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Mm -hmm. He can't know them. Yeah. But we can. Amen. Because we're not a natural man. We're a new man and woman in Christ. Amen. We're brand new. We have a spirit in us. We've got to recognize and identify when he's there and when he's in us. Amen. And tell you, the, the best time, I, you know, when, when fear comes, is it's coming. If we just hold still mm -hmm. and hear that still small voice, what's going to happen is, is that you belong to God and I belong to God, God's going to come through. Because he's going to make a way of escape. He's going to be there to let us know, look, I got this. I want you to see it from my perspective. Let me tell you something. That is the most beautiful thing on this planet, Earth. To have the very God of the universe who made us, who made everything, the creator of all, to really have a conversation with you yeah. and me, regardless of what you're going through. It ain't who told you. God told me. Amen. 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 And God can tell you too. It's written in his pages because this was written for a fourth time that to the hope of the scriptures. We may have hope, the comfort of the scriptures. This is how we make it through. Mm -hmm. This is how you and I are making it through right now. Amen. Right now. Right now. This very moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, things are hard and struggling and all this and all that. But I'm telling you right now, not too many people have tapped into this. Because the only way that you really see this is that you know Him. Because that's eternal life, is to know God. Amen. And His Son, as He has said, that's eternal life. And to know these things, man, look, I ain't got really no time to fear. Yeah, it comes knocking on the door. And let's close with this. Because I think that's, uh, I got more here, but I'm going to go over here and look at another passage of Scripture. Look at Psalms 1. 20, 112, 112, 112. Y'all here? All right, we're getting this, right? Yes. Amen. I know it's a mouthful, but... Whew. Amen, I'm telling you. Watch this. 112. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandments. You see that? His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. Your, your family be blessed, man. Amen. By your example. Praise by to keeping his commandments. Yeah. Look, they can't help from being blessed because they're watching you and they're around you. Watch this. The generations of the upright shall be blessed. Yeah. Amen. You see that? Wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endure forever. Unto the upright, see the upright is the righteous, the ones who got some sense, some common sense to know from right from wrong and going to do the right thing. Mm. That's the upright, right? Yes. They arise light in the darkness. See that darkness, and they see, they, listen, fear ain't got no problem when it's dark. Yeah. That's why you see some spooky movies, you can't even really see the monster. Because it's so dark, you're trying to figure out what he, what's this thing look like? <laughs> but just that, just that whole thing of the, it's being dark. That's all planned. That's all planned. So that spirit of fear came from Satan. Because wherever their darkness is, that's where Satan is. And that's why I say in here, it says, unto the upright there arise light in the darkness. See, when we, when the fear come, and if it's dark, there's light. There's light. Watch this. Y'all ready? He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man shall favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. Oh my goodness. Amen. Watch this. He shall not be afraid of the evil tidings. His heart is fixed trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. You see that? He hath dispersed. He have given to the poor uh, uh, his righteous, endure forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. You notice he said horn there, and that represents a ram or animal with horns. You ain't going to walk up on a ram when he's mad because he's going to ram you. That just, that's his show of strength. Get back. <laughs> so when we trust God, we have a horn in a sense, that a protection. Watch this. 
The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall grasp with his teeth and shall melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Let's go to Psalms 27. Let's close with this. We're getting this. I know it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. But it's okay. Y'all grown. Y'all can show it up. Y'all can get it down. Amen. 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 Look at 27. He says, The Lord is my light and my strength. Whom shall I fear? You see that? The Lord is the, Lord is the strength of my life, and whom shall I be afraid? Amen. Is he the strength of my life? In your life. Amen. If I'm afraid, he, evidently at that time he can't be my. Mm. He can't be my light. I mean, if I'm, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm, I'm all caught up in stuff. Amen. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Mm. Oh, that's fantastic, right there. <laughs> I mean, you know, no weapon. Thou art a host should encamp against me. My heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. And this will I be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord. And to acquire in his temple. You, you notice that when it says an acquire in his temple. That means, that temple means that inner man. Because that's where he's at. That's where he's at. That's where we are most confident in our walk when he tells us, before anybody else on the outside tells us, I got you. Mm -hmm. I got this. I mean, when you get an assurance like that, oh, praise God. Man, thank you, Jesus. Let's go down here to uh, verse uh, uh, 9. No, 8. eight. When thou sayest, seek he seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Now that's important, y'all. He says, When thou sayest, seek, seek ye my face. Now when does he say that? Think about that. Seek ye my face when thou sayest. He's talking about himself. When when I come to you, because I'm gonna make a way of escape. And he, he's gonna come to our inner man and let us know. That's when we gotta respond. My heart shall say unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Not brush it off. You don't want to never miss, uh, uh, understand the voice of God. Or, oh, God, is this you? I don't want to be in a point where, God, is this, are you really saying this? That means we're not really familiar. So we need to be, get familiar with this voice. Familiar with hanging out. You ever know somebody hanging up with somebody calling you on the phone? Immediately, the first word, you know who it is. They might sound like somebody else, but you know why? Because you talk to them a lot. You know their ways. See, that's the same way with God. We got to know God's ways. He said, my ways pass fine out, but check this out. I'll help you. I'll show you along the way. Amen. Amen. It says here, let's go up here. Uh, uh, let's go to 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a pain path because of my enemies. Deliver me not. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies, for false witnesses are rising against me, and such a brief and a cruelty. I have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Watch this. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage. There it is again. See that? And he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. 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 Fear is something that is here to stay. But we got to recognize it because that's the enemy's job. He don't want us to prosper. He don't want no success. He wants to keep, you know, as long as you can keep Christians on that bump on a log, never doing anything for Christ, not never really getting out of some situation they should have been out a long time ago, he has victory. But it shouldn't be victory. Because God has prepared a path for us to walk in. Amen. Has ordained it. We was, we're not born again by osmosis. We were chosen by God Amen. to accomplish something in this earth. But fear is going to be knocking. You can't do it. You can't do it. But with God, we can. Amen? Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all.